given the attempts over these last few days to silence NGOs by constantly shifting the goalposts, I am sure we are all interested to find out if this body is serious about hearing our voices. This preparatory committee has finally put its cards on the table with the public release of the draft outcome document. The paragraphs which now have been touched upon include the following. Accusations that Israel is guilty of apartheid, crimes against humanity and genocide. Allegations that Palestinians are victims of Israeli racism. The accusation that Zionism is racism by referring to a racially based law of return. Claims of a right of return that would end the Jewishness of the State of Israel. And an effort to end Israeli sovereignty over Jerusalem. Addressing the burning UN human rights issue of clustering, there are at least six paragraphs in a single section condemning Israel. Since there are actually no paragraphs condemning racism by any other country, there is no clustering problem in that regard. For some here, the main issue is not that such paragraphs are an affront to the protection of human rights, period, but duplication. From that frame of reference, I note that paragraph 57 in section 1 condemning Israel is identical to paragraph 11 in section 4. But upon closer examination, it appears that expanding condemnations of only Israel at the Durban Review Conference is supposed to be the point, not the problem. The representatives of various Arab and Muslim states have stated their support for these paragraphs and also proposed additional language condemning Israel. So while representatives of civil society from democratic states are grateful that the European Union has facilitated the capacity of NGOs to speak at all, we are also left wondering on the substance. What has happened to the European Union? Why are its representatives afraid to say unambiguously out loud that these allegations are a gross defamation of Israel, a slander against the Jewish people, and anti-Semitism dressed up as human rights? Why have the members of the European Union failed to point out that one-fifth of Israel's population is Arab, with more democratic rights than in any Arab state, while Arab states are now effectively Judenrein? Given that the UN calls Jews and Palestinian lands the crime of Judaization, why has the European Union not noted with concern that there is no reference to apartheid Palestine? It is not surprising that the human rights abusers are engaged in this exercise. The real surprise and embarrassment is to watch the members of the European Union sit here and commence a conversation, a diplomatic dialogue, for and against contemporary forms of anti-Semitism, for and against Zionism, for and against freedom of expression, for and against the effort to defeat terrorism. So I have to ask, Germany, France, the United Kingdom, given the document before us, the statements, the dynamic of this forum, isn't it high time you face the question, what are you doing here? Your conduct is legitimizing this anti-human rights forum. You are lending credibility to these discussions broadcast around the world. Your citizens' hard-earned dollars are paying the costs of over one-third of these proceedings. You fear refusing consensus since you don't have the numbers to prevail if you did, which means the outcome is certain to be worse for human rights protection than when you began. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves.